Hi guys, this is John from Meat Sticks University, and this is Cured Sausage 206, Advanced Summer Sausage, Snack Stick, and Cured Sausage Processing. Now, if you're someone who likes to know the why to a lot of the things we're gonna be telling you to do today, then I'd recommend you go back and watch all of the two O's in the cured sausage category. We'll be covering it really quickly today, but we're not gonna be going into anything in any detail. We're also gonna be making summer sausage, snack sticks, and cured sausages in the same video because the process is exactly the same until we get to the stuffing process, and even then, from there on, it's still pretty similar. Now, since we were making cured product, we're going to be using a pork butt, and that's right around the 70 to 30 lean to fat ratio. Now, if you want to find this out for yourself, you can look at the back of any package of pork butt. This one I had had said it was 21 grams of protein to 6 grams of fat, which would be 72 to 28, so right there. We're gonna be making seven pounds of snack sticks. So we're gonna be using 0.35 of a pound of the gigawatt hot snack stick seasoning. We'll be making seven pounds of cured sausage. So for that, we're gonna use 0.28 of a pound of the cheeseburger cheddar worst. And then to show you that we can use seasonings that are designed to make a specific product to make something entirely else, we're gonna be using habanero mango bratwurst seasoning to make summer sausage. We just have to remember to add the cure to that one. Now, I want to be able to smoke these today, so I am going to use something as a cure accelerator. For the gigawatt hot, the citric acid will work perfectly fine, but I don't really want a tang in my cheeseburger cheddarwurst or in my habanero mango summer sausage. So I'm going to use sodium erythorbate on one, and I'm going to use smoked meat stabilizer in the other, as neither of these will impart much, if any, taste. Now, if you're gonna try and measure out additives for smaller batches, a scale that would accurately measure in grams or fractions of ounces is necessary. I'm also gonna be using Superbind when making all of these, and since they're seven pound batches, I'm gonna be using 3.3 ounces. I'm gonna add cheese to these. For the Gigawatt, I'm gonna add the ghost pepper cheese to make it really hot. For the habanero mango, I'm gonna add some hot pepper cheese, as it doesn't really have a lot of heat to it, but it does have a nice flavor, and it should go nicely with that. And then obviously for the cheeseburger cheddar worst, I'm just adding cheddar. Now the casings I'm using for the summer sausage are the fibrous, so they need to be soaked for at least 30 minutes in warm water before they're ready to be used for stuffing. I generally start smoking them right before I start grinding. Now, neither the 32 millimeter collagen I'm using or the 19 millimeter smoke collagen I'm using for the snack sticks need any preparation. They're ready to go right out of the package. So we've got our plates and our knives oiled. A quick note here on the plates and knives. Walton sells two types of plates and knives. We sell disposable and sharpenable. For the disposable ones, you just use them until they're dull and then you throw them out. And these can be sharpened again for future use. Now the disposable ones will work, but the knives and plates that can be sharpened when they're dull are gonna give you a better finished product. You can tell the sharpenable blades from the disposable ones as they have this insert into the blades, where the disposable ones don't and they sort of look like a boat propeller. Now our meat is extremely cold, and even though we're doing three different products, we can grind them all at the same time as they should all go through a 3 8 plate first and then a 1 8 plate. With our meat being so cold, you should be able to see how quickly both the first and second grind go. The second grind is always gonna take longer, but when the meat is near frozen, it will go much faster. If you notice that either of your grinds is taking an incredibly long time, you might need to sharpen your plates and knives or replace them. Now, since these are smaller batches, I'm gonna have to do the protein extraction by hand as the scoops on the paddles of a meat mixer aren't gonna be able to mix this small of an amount. While mixing, I'm gonna add my seasoning, cure, and binder, along with 10 ounces of water. For the water, 10 ounces to a seven pounds of meat would equal one quart to 25 pounds. We're gonna mix until we have a nice protein extraction in all our meat. Now for the snack sticks, I'm using encapsulated citric acid, so I'm gonna add that during the last 60 seconds. Along with the cheeses, I'll add those at the end to all of them, just to prevent any uh, smearing. Now here's where we start diverting from one product to another. I'm gonna start with the summer sausage first. So I have the largest stuffing tube that these casings will fit over. With fibrous casings, we really aren't worried about blowouts, so we're gonna stuff it until the casing is full and smooth. Then when we're done with that, we have to clip the end closed. Remember, all the weight of the meat is gonna be pushing down on that clip, so it has to be nice and tight. You can use either the hog ring pliers 
auto load hog ring pliers, or some sort of bag and casing clipper. Depending on how much you do, you might want to invest in a bag and casing clipper, but if you're a home processor, most of the time the auto load hog ring pliers will be perfectly fine. The regular hog ring pliers I don't recommend unless you're just getting into this and doing very small batches. Now next I'm doing the smoked sausage. Again, I want to use the biggest tube that these casings will fit over, and I do have to be fairly careful here not to overstuff and cause blowouts. So a slightly understuffed casing is much better than an overstuffed casing, as we can always twist it an extra time or two to firm them up. For these, we're going to do an advanced linking and hang them from this. Make sure that you have some empty casing at the end of the sausage, and then you can make a link and fold it back over the rope so that your second link will be the exact same size as the first. Then you have to pinch off that link and twist some of the empty casing around where the two sausages meet. Then spin the two links a few extra time, and at this point it should look sort of like a ring baloney. Now, hold it from the link that you just made and bring the rope up to the top and pinch it down. Then bring that rope up through the middle of what you just made, and now you should have three brats all the same size all hanging there. Now just keep repeating this process until you're done. You now have perfectly even brats that should cook at the same rate. For the snack sticks, we're using 19 millimeter casings and we've chosen the 12 millimeter stuffing tube. They should flow off this tube fairly smoothly and really all we have to do is lightly hold them on. As this is gonna be the hardest one to stuff and it's the smallest stuffing tube, you probably wanna make sure you have your stuffer clamped down to the table to prevent the stuffer from rocking as you turn the handle. Casing should be full and smooth, but not overstuffed, as you want to keep an eye on that to avoid blowouts. Now, I like to lay these out and then cut them to the longest lengths possible for how big my smoker is. This way, we'll have the least amount of curved sections possible. Now, we're going to go over three different ways to smoke these. First, for the snack sticks, we're going to leave them in our PK100 the entire time and rely on the water pan with the extra large sponges to provide us with the relative humidity. If you have any interest in why we're doing that, go back and look at advanced thermal processing. Now for summer sausage, we're going to be pulling these out of the smoker between 130 and 140 degrees, and we're going to finish them up in water. We do that so that we're not spending 10 hours smoking them. And for the smoked sausage, we're just going to put these in our Pro Smoker 500T that has the ability to control the relative humidity throughout the entire process. So those will cook nicely and quickly. Now, full smoke schedules for these will be listed in the Meatgistics article, but basically, we're going to start them all at 125 degrees with no smoke and our dampers wide open for an hour to act as our drying stage. This will allow smoke to adhere to the sausages later on. Then we're going to close those dampers down mostly and add smoke and add our water pan with sponges to the PK100 and increase the temperature to 140 degrees for one hour. Then we're going to close our dampers all the way down, move it up to 155 degrees for two hours, and then at 175 degrees until our internal temperature is 160 degrees. For the summer sausage, we're pulling them out of the smoker at about 130 to 140 degrees, and I'm going to vacuum seal them and finish them up in water that's heated to 175 degrees. You don't need to put them in a vacuum bag, but I still recommend doing it unless you're using deionized water and you're 100% sure that your processing area is sterile. It should take us about an hour to an hour and a half to reach that desired temperature. And we're going to go over this in much more detail in future episodes, but 160 degrees is the point of instant lethality, meaning as soon as you hit that, we've killed off everything we're worried about. The USDA, however, realizes that lower temperatures can still achieve the same results. They just need to be held there for a little bit longer. This is referred to as Appendix A, and it can be found at a link I'll put in the Meatgistics article. Just be sure that you've properly calibrated your thermometer before trying to use this chart. Now, I also like the slightly more dry texture that cooking these to 160 degrees gives us versus cooking it to 150 and holding it at that temperature for a certain amount of time. Once we've reached the desired temp, we want to put these into an ice bath to stop the cooking process and to help set the casing. If you have excessive wrinkling on your snack sticks or your fibrous casings are pulling away a level of the meat when peeling, then your ice bath is most likely the reason why. Once we've left these in the ice bath for about 20 minutes, we'll take them out and leave them uncovered at room temperature for an hour before moving them to a cooler for overnight before packaging. 
Okay, so everything's all done. We pulled the summer sausage out of the smoker at about 135 degrees, put it in our sous vide cooker, had that at 175 degrees, and we waited the full hour and a half. We probably should have checked around an hour and 20, because these do did go up to 163 degrees. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but it's 160 degrees is the point of instant lethality. There's no reason to cook beyond that with beef, pork. The only thing you gotta worry about is you know chicken and other game birds. So from a taste perspective, the habanero mango worked out great. I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't have the right salt content for a summer sausage since it's a bratwurst seasoning, but it worked out great. Nice texture, and I am glad I didn't put the ghost pepper cheese in it, just put the hot pepper. Really lets the habanero mango like stand on its own. And also, no encapsulated citric acid. Remember, I used a smoked meat stabilizer for this really doesn't give it any tang, so just nice habanero mango without anything else interfering with it. Now the gigawatt, we already know is the hottest seasoning we sell. Add some ghost pepper cheese to that and it is off the charts. These will make you sweat, but delicious flavor. Really, really like these. That PK100, and I've said it for a long time, puts a better smoke on product than very expensive commercial smokehouses like the 500T. I still think the PK100 gets more smoke flavor onto your product. The cheeseburger cheddarwurst are great. Absolutely love this seasoning and adding cheddar cheese to it was you know, an obvious. You can't miss on that one. Just take the layup when it's there. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and visit waltonsinc.com and meatgistics.com to find everything but the meat. Thanks for watching. I'm John with Meatgistics University, and I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to Walton's YouTube channel to watch more amazing videos, or shop at waltonsinc.com to find everything but the meat. Check out our latest sales and giveaway video here, or watch another hand-picked video by clicking here.